Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, it's finally here. The president of Zimbabwe announced that Starlink is now registered in Zimbabwe. Now, if you follow the channel, you know that uh, back in April, I said Starlink will be registered in Zimbabwe soon. So there's been so much talk surrounding Starlink that I don't know where to start. So let's start from the beginning. So on Africa Day, the president of Zimbabwe, E.D. Mnangagwa, announced that he had licensed Starlink through the regulator Potras and that a local company, IMC Communications, had been issued exclusive rights to basically distribute Starlink hardware and other services in Zimbabwe. Now, there was so much talk as to why IMC Communications was awarded the rights to distribute Starlink in the country. Now, I'm not a politician and I'll leave that to the politicians. But I want to address some of the fears that Zimbabweans had on social media. And there's been a lot of misinformation or disinformation surrounding Starlink. I was also hoping that maybe by now Potras would have updated the nation on how they intend to work with Starlink but at the time of posting this video there was no update given by Potras. So some of the concerns raised were that IMC Communications as the sole distributor of Starlink would inadvertently raise prices of the hardware and Starlink services. In my opinion that is not going to happen. Starlink has almost a similar approach when it's dealing with uh, countries in the global south. If you look at Brazil, they are charging 40 US dollars, around 38 US dollars for Starlink. And this is the same across many territories in the global south, right? And uh, it's the same in Rwanda, it's the same in Kenya, it's the same in Malawi, and uh, Zimbabwe will be no exception. At the time of posting this, the standard actuated kit is retailing for 300 dollars in all regions and Zimbabwe will be no exception. They are currently phasing out the actuated kit, hence the price cuts. The new standard kit is retailing for $600 though. So the next question might be, what is the role of IMC communications then? If you take a look at uh, the Starlink model, they tend to work with the resellers. Uh, a good example is in Zambia, they work with uh, Paratas Africa, they, those are the ones that are distributing Starlink hardware as well as offering other value-added services. Uh, the same company that is in Zambia is also working in Mozambique. Paratas Africa is also in Mozambique and chances are if they were here they will be the sole distributor in Zimbabwe. Now there was also talk about the whole deal having gone to tender. That would be the first time that would have happened because most resellers they simply go on the Starlink website and apply to be a reseller in the country. So I don't think that was going to happen. Okay, so now let's talk about the role of IMC communications and how they'll be operating in Zimbabwe. I'm not really sure how they'll be doing it, but most Starlink resellers, including Paratas Africa, are responsible for handling business clients, handling government contracts, and other value-added services like installations and after-sales support. They can also sell to individuals, but Starlink states that once you buy through the reseller, all your Starlink related matters will be handled by the reseller. Potras also indicated that they would want Starlink to backhaul local internet service providers. Basically, Starlink will be the backbone between the internet core network and, for example, local mobile networks in the rural areas, which are inaccessible to fiber networks. You can also opt to buy directly from the Starlink website. And if you opt to do so, make sure you're on the waiting list by paying the $9 deposit on their website. If you fail to do so, you might find yourself waiting a very long time. Which leads to another point. Starlink is not a perfect technology. Nothing really is. For example, due to high demand, Lusaka, Zambia is currently at capacity, which means if you order a Starlink kit in Lusaka, you might get it in the fourth quarter of 2024. Without getting too technical, Starlink uses hexagons for their geospatial mapping. Each hexagon is around 350 square kilometers. It can only serve a certain amount of customers at a time. And with the demand for Starlink in Zimbabwe at the moment, I foresee Harare getting to capacity very, very soon because of the high population density in urban areas. I don't see this being a problem in other small towns and cities though. Now let's talk about pricing and Starlink's packages. For the vast amount of users, the standard unlimited package which retails under $40 will suffice. 
it's not unlimited unlimited if you get what i'm saying if you use up one terabyte starlink's fair use policy will kick in and speeds will drop from around 200 megabits per second to between 20 to 40 megabits which ironically is still faster than most local internet service providers businesses and heavy users can opt to pay more for starlink's priority packages which offer customers priority data as well as lower latencies for example if you buy their 40 gig priority data you'll get faster speeds of up to 220 megabits and lower latencies when you exhaust your data you will be relegated to the standard unlimited package customers have the option to get 40 gig one terabyte and two terabyte priority packages now, do I think that Starlink would disrupt the local internet sector? The short answer is yes. If that wasn't the case, then uh, why all of a sudden are non-geologged lines from liquid suddenly flooding the black market and getting cheaper? And also, why would liquid technologies also partner OneWeb to counter Starlink? So obviously, I'm sure local players are quite aware of the impact of Starlink. Now, while Starlink does not compete directly with local mobile network operators, I foresee a situation where their revenues will be drastically affected unless they do something. Because if you look at it, Starlink is mobile in nature. So I foresee a scenario where the same Starlink that one uses at work, they can also bring it back home to use. And let's be honest, very few local companies will be able to compete with that $38 price tag. Although local companies who offer fiber will still have a distinct advantage if they play their cards right because Starlink's weakness is upload speeds. Well, fiber is no issue with uploads. So I foresee a scenario where maybe a few businesses and individuals will remain with fiber for that reason. That is if the companies offering fiber actually make it competitive and desirable. Starlink will be officially launching in Zimbabwe in the third quarter of 2024. Now, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.